Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea cloud coast. Let your mountains dark and green. Good evening and welcome to Dr. Paul's dorm room. As you remember from our last appendix rupturing episode, Kim Jellyneck, dead Dr. Paul's oldest, dearest, and shortest friend, has been flushed down the toilet. Who will attempt to save this unfortunate no-neck soul? We'll see. Poor Kim. I miss his pleasant little laugh already. Well, it's a good riddance as far as I'm concerned. Earache. Can, Can you, you help, help us put Dr. Paul into the refrigerator? We're afraid if we let him rot here much longer, some parts of his cadaver will drop right off and roll under the furniture, and then the cat will get at them. You're right, Larry and Al. Let's move him. Ha ah, there we go. Earache, his feet stick out. That's okay. I'll get some scotch magic tape to hold the refrigerator door shut. But aren't we going to have an open coffin funeral? I don't think we'd better. Look at that ghastly face. It's enough to make you lose your dinner. You're, You're right. right. It, it looks, looks like, like he hasn't, hasn't shaved in weeks. Hey, I have an idea. Let's get together all of Paul's favorite possessions and put them in the coffin with him. Just like King Tut. Right. I'll put in these old turkey sandwiches, his clock radio, and some clean underwear, in case he has an accident. And, and here's, here's his favorite Kiss album, his, his vinyl inflatable, inflatable Sally, and his electric football game. What about a picture of me? Here's a bottle of Chateau Mad Dog, and his life-size poster of Dave the DJ. Hey, chump, I said, what about a picture of me? Okay, wife, we'll put that in, too. Psst, Alan Larry, it's a good thing Paul's already dead because burying him with her picture would probably kill him anyway. What did you say? Uh, just that Paul is a lucky guy to have made as nice a person as you a widow. Have, have you, you decided, decided where, where to, to bury him, him yet? Well, ever since Paul heard the village people's song, In the Navy, he's wanted to travel around the world on a ship with a bunch of men. So I think Paul would like to be buried at sea. But, but where, where will we find a body of water around here? I thought we'd use Foss Pond. Foss Pond, as you know, is a beautiful aromatic cesspool, I mean lake, located on the PLU campus. It is a favorite recreation area for both students and community members. Good idea. Well, let's head on down there now. But if Kim has been flushed, we'll need another pallbearer. You're right. I know someone who might help. I'll call him right now. Well, well. Dr. Paul will soon be buried at sea in Foss Pond, just the way he would have wanted it. But who is Erate calling to be the new Paul bearer? Tune in to our next exciting show and see. You've been listening to Dr. Paul's dorm room, on KPLU FM. We apologize for the unintentional gastrointestinal noises in the following program. It's Dr. Paul's dorm room. A good evening and welcome. As you remember from our last bloody mucus discharge causing episode, Dr. Paul's body has finally been placed in his coffin along with all his favorite possessions. Meanwhile, Earache is on the telephone looking for another Paul bearer. Will he be able to find someone to help carry the stiff to its final resting place in Foss Pond? We'll see. So you'll be able to do it? All right. I'll see you here in two minutes. Earache, have, have you found, found a Paul bear, bear yet? Yes, he's coming over right away. Now all we need is someone to speak at the funeral.
KPLU-FM. Hello, Dave the DJ. This is Earache. We're having a little get-together down at Foss Pond to bury Dr. Paul's corpse, and we were wondering if you would deliver the eulogy. Why, it would be an honor. I'll just put on a long album and meet you down there. Why, thank you, sir. Widow, would, would you, you like, like to answer, answer the door? door? Would you like to shove it? Don't trouble yourself, Widow. I'll get the door. Why, it's the little pile. Uh, I'm Blonde. What it is? Thanks for coming to help with the funeral, Blondie. Hi there. I'm Paul's widow. I think your little mustache is really cute. Get away from me, woman. Use jailbait for sure. Our gang sadly lifts Dr. Paul's coffin and slowly processes down to Foss Pond, whistling a sorrowful funeral dirge. Soon they arrive and join the crowd of mourners. Dr. Paul sure was a popular guy. Look at all the people who turned out for his funeral. Why, there's nearly seven. Well, I'm only here to make sure he's buried good and deep. And I'm here because you mentioned $25 if I helped out. Shh. Look, Dave the DJ is about to speak. Dearly beloved, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are gathered here to pay our final respects to our departed friend and brother, Dr. Paul. He was loved by many and an inspiration to all who knew him. And now to pay tribute in song to the dear departed, Al and Larry present an organ duet in his memory. funeral tribute to Dr. Paul. Tune in to our next exciting show as we continue the funeral service. You've been listening to Dr. Paul's Dorm Room on KPLU-FM. Good evening and welcome to Dr. Paul's dorm room. As you remember from our last horrid age spot producing episode, Al and Larry are performing an organ duet in the memory of deceased Dr. Paul. Will we quit dragging out the funeral service, get Paul buried, and move on to new plot developments? We'll see. Touching tribute to Dr. Paul by Larry and Al. And now Earache has a few words to share with us. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> My friend Dr. Paul was truly a wonderful guy. Always friendly, courteous, kind, selfish, gentle. And as a football player, he could always make it with the ladies. He was a credit to his race and God's gift to womankind. That's who? And now let's have a moment of silence for the dead doctor. Listen, there's noises coming out of Dr. Paul's coffin. We'd better go look. Sean Tin picks up his kung fu sword and threatens our hero. You put it down, you slimy little reptile. To this threat, our hero answers. Oh, 
It's Dr. Paul's favorite radio show, The Adventures of Kung Fu Frog, on the radio we put in Paul's coffin. But who turned it on? Dave the DJ, how could we hear your voice narrating the Kung Fu Frog show when you're down here at the funeral? It's through the magic of radio, Larry and Al. It's a pre-recorded show. Wow! You know, in my nursing class, we've been having a shortage of cadavers to study. So as long as we have the coffin open, I don't think Paul would mind if I borrowed his spleen and about seven feet of his small intestines. I'll just use my Cub Scout knife and... Ouch. Dr. Dr. Paul, he's... Alive. We just heard him speak. No, he's still dead. I am not, why? You are so. I am not. Dr. Paul, it's nice to have you back among the living. I was never really gone. I've just been playing a little prank all along. <laughs> but we were sure you were dead. You weren't breathing. I was just holding my breath, earache. Why didn't you take my pulse? We haven't learned how to take a pulse in my nursing class yet. All we've learned is how to give enemas and clean out bedpans. Hey, earache. Yes, Blondie? There's some funny noises coming from the bushes here. Well, well, and happy day. Dr. Paul is alive again. But what are the strange noises coming from the bushes? Tune in to our next exciting show and see. You've been listening to Dr. Paul's Dorm Room on KPLU-FM.